Hi everyone. I'm not even going to edit this video. I'm just going to put it up. This is a spur of the moment thing where I'm thinking of five things and I wrote them down. Five things that you need to do if you are building an e-commerce website or if you're thinking of starting one or if you have one and you haven't really put any effort into it. And even if you do have one that's going well, I have a tip for you too and I'll get into that a little bit later. But the first thing that you need to do is that if you're moving off of a different platform and you have an established business already, so let's say you have an Etsy shop and you want to open a website, which you should, you have your business name, everything is registered, you're all legal and you can't change it. If your business name is spelled weird, like if it has a number in it or if it has like designs with a Z, you know, I mean, anything that's kind of an, an out of the norm spelling, you need to get the domain name registered for the spelling of your business name, but also for the normal spelling, if you can get that. And I know that a lot of people will change the spelling of their business name because someone else already has the other one. That's not the best idea, but if you're stuck with it and you can't change it, change, you know, get, get register your domain name for the way that you spell it, but then also try to register the other spellings. Cause what's going to happen is customers will go to Google or they'll go to Bing or whatever browser they're using. They're going to type in the name of your business and they're going to spell it wrong, but they're spelling it the right way, right? So they're not spelling it the way that you're spelling it. They're spelling it the way that normal people <laughs> actually spell it. So just if you have both domain names registered, you can point everything at your website. And this is a pretty common thing. I have misspellings registered for my domains and it, you know, I, I tend to type very fast and inaccurately. And a lot of companies will do this. They'll register multiple variations of the spelling and they will point everything at their website so that if somebody does type it in wrong or right, you know, like if they're spelling it the normal way, but you have it spelled a different way, then it will all go to your website regardless. And you wanna kind of cover your bases that way. So make sure that you have everything registered. All right, the second thing is to figure out your site structure before you go live. Now your site structure is basically where, you know, like what categories you're gonna have. Are you gonna have a blog? Are you gonna have subcategories and that kind of stuff? And you wanna kind of figure this out before you go live so that you're not just kind of adding things on because it gets to be really messy for people who are on the site searching for things. And it makes it difficult to find things that are nested in subcategories and a sub subcategory and the whole thing. So just sit down with a piece of paper and draw a little map and figure out what your menus are gonna be, figure out where things are gonna to link to, and just keep it as clean as possible so that you don't have layers and layers and layers of things. And also that will prevent you from having to go back and consolidate categories and that could mess links up. It just depends on how your site is set up. So you want to kind of get all of that in you know, like a plan before you actually go live so that when you do go live, you don't have to go back and change links and you might mess things up and you might have to do redirects and that's just a pain. So make sure that your site structure is where you want it before you get started. And if you're in the position, like I am, my, my site's been up live for a couple of years now, since I changed templates, it's a different, you know, it's on a different template. I set everything up the way that I wanted it and I don't change it. So just make sure that you've done that. But if you are set up already and you have to change things around, just make sure that you're not messing up links and redirecting, like if all your old links on Pinterest aren't going to work, that's a problem. So you might have to do redirects and just be aware of that. But if you set everything up right before you get started, it's not going to be as much of an issue. All right. The third thing is if you're transferring listings into your new site, you've downloaded your Etsy catalog, you're now uploading it to Shopify or wherever you're going to be selling. You have your catalog, you've uploaded it, and now all of the URLs for the products are really long because <laughs> they have taken all of the Etsy titles and added them in as the URL for that product. Go in and change those and change them to something basic and change them to something shorter. It's not important. Google doesn't care if it's a long URL. Google doesn't care if they're numbers. Google doesn't care if there are strange characters in the URLs, but just visually it's a hot mess. So keep it shorter for the URLs and go in and edit that. And then you can change the titles later. But if you have the URL set and the slug, it's the last part of the URL. If the slug is what you want it to be and you put a keyword in there, why not? You know, they, they don't really, it's questionable whether that even matters, but it, it's just something that you want to have set up so that you don't have to go change it in the future. And it doesn't look really long for customers because it's really a people thing. If people see a super long URL, it's just kind of weird. 
So go in and change that. And no matter where you upload a catalog, generally they'll take the title, the H1 tag, they'll take that for that listing and use that as the slug for the URL. So Etsy titles are long, and that's gonna give you a really long one. Just go in and edit that down. And you don't have to change the title, you just need to change the URL. So do that first. Once that's done, that listing can go live and then you never have to worry about it. You can leave that there forever and you can change the title as much as you want for SEO purposes. All right, the next thing is to get your social media names. And we were talking about this yesterday in my, I have a Google SEO membership. You can join it, links in the description of the teachable classes. Um, we were talking about this and Bill brought up that he advised, and I advise this too, it's just a good idea to get your social media names, even if you don't use that platform. So I don't use TikTok, but I have my business name on TikTok because I want that name there in case I do decide to use it at some point. I'm probably not gonna be using Facebook or Instagram too much next year, but I'm not getting rid of my pages. I'm just gonna leave the accounts there and just post whenever I feel like it. But you wanna register whenever something new comes along, register your business name on that platform just in case and just to prevent someone else from taking it. Okay, you're, you're just cake blocking people, okay? Cake block, that's what I do. So you wanna go in and register your business names on social media platforms to make sure that you can have that account if you want it with your business name and it, it's just important down the road for promotion, regardless of whether you use the account or not, just do that. All right, the fifth thing is to look at on your website, wherever you're building your website, find out where the SEO goes, so to speak. So there are gonna be places on your website template where you need to put keywords. You need to be aware that those sections should be filled out to help search engines find your listings. Every template is different, Please don't ask me for technical help. I am, I, you know, you can Google this. You can look it up on YouTube. Every platform has good technical videos on YouTube and you can always contact their support directly, but you need to find out which sections you need to fill out. And it's different. It's different on every template because some templates kind of simplify it and they let you type things in and then they put it where it needs to be in the code. Some templates actually have, you know, this is what it's for. And so you can see it's for the meta description. It's for the meta title. Those things aren't necessarily things that you need to worry about, but you need to look on your template and find out what needs to be filled out and make sure that those are all filled out because the more information that you give the search engines, the easier it's gonna to be to find and index your listings. And it's just gonna make it easier for customers to find you down the road. So don't say, oh, I'll do that later. That's something that's important and you can do it later if you have your structure all set up you've got your URLs listed, your products are ready to go, I would go ahead and turn your website on. And that's, I'll give this the bonus tip, okay? No, I'll wait for a minute for that. But I would say, go ahead and turn your website on, even if you haven't optimized the SEO for it, because you can go back and optimize SEO later. I would go ahead and turn your website on and just start promoting it yourself on social media, send people to it, because it, it's never gonna be perfect. There's always gonna be changes that you have to make but there are things that you can just turn it on and you can do things to get people to go there and buy stuff right away. So just go ahead and do that. Now the bonus tip is that you should probably keep a catalog, just a running catalog of all of your products for yourself. Now every single platform like Google Merchant Center and um, Pinterest and Facebook and Instagram, any, any place that asks you to upload a catalog, they're gonna have their own format. So they're gonna need different information in different columns. But if you just download your Etsy shop, if you have an Etsy shop, download that catalog and there's a way to download that in the CSV files, download data section, it's in the options in your shop dashboard and the settings, I don't know, it's somewhere in there. You can download a catalog of all of your products and then when you add something new, just add it to that catalog manually yourself. It, this does not have to be for any specific platform. Just keep a catalog of your own products because there will come a time when you need to upload a catalog somewhere. And if you have it all there right in front of you and you don't have to figure out how to do it, it just makes your life a little easier. And especially if you wanna change platforms and you need to upload a catalog to a new platform for a new website, that's gonna make your life a lot easier because a lot of platforms don't let you download a catalog. <laughs> this is the thing, I cannot download a catalog of my products from GoDaddy. Don't use GoDaddy for your website, I'm just saying. 
and I know how to deal with it because I've been on there for years, but don't, don't choose it as your first option, okay? But a lot of these platforms make it difficult to download a catalog because they want to keep you on the platform. They don't want you to leave and go somewhere else. So if you start a catalog of your own stuff and you keep it and you just have it as a running catalog, then when you do need to upload to Facebook or you need to upload to Pinterest, you can go in and take the columns that they need for that specific version and you can submit it and you don't have to worry about trying to figure out how to do it. So just go ahead and do that. Whether you have a website now or whether you have one that you're starting, it's important to do that just to make your life a little easier. All right, so give this video a thumbs up. Leave me any comments and questions and I will talk to you later.